We've been in a series for eight weeks in all of our life groups around it. It's been so encouraging. The scripture has so much to say about seeds and what we do today and how that impacts our tomorrow and the rest of our life. So we're continuing that today, uh, talking about the seed, the power of the seed, the principle of the seed. And this week, what we're going to talk about is that above and beyond idea. The principle of multiplication is what we're talking about today. So what I need you to do is I need you all to go back into your memory banks and I need you to recall a time when you were called upon to help someone out who was in need. Any kind of need you can think of. Maybe somebody called you uh, in the middle of the night. Maybe a friend was being evicted from their house and they weren't anticipating that. Maybe a family member was in crisis and they called you or some kind of natural disaster was happening uh, and so you responded to, to help people you knew. And I need know some people who live for that like they they don't live for crisis but it's like they were made to serve you know like they have all the answers they know exactly what to do um they they just they know how to jump in and mobilize people to get stuff done and then there's others of us which is me okay the the, uh, the rest of us um I find myself most of the time in a state of limbo between wanting to help people and like how much is that going to cost me <laughs> if I'm being honest um, because it's like when I feel like something's going on and I see a need and I'm going, I could, I don't like, I want to help. There is a desire inside me to help, but I honestly don't know that I'm even equipped to do that. Like, I don't think I have what it takes. I don't know if I know what you need. Um, like I, I'm just not sure if I can meet that need. And I'm also going, I don't know if I have the amount of energy, you know, <laughs> like, because once you know, have, you ever, have you ever thought, let's be honest, if you ever think about it, sometimes we just jump into action and it's fine. The adrenaline gets us going and we get through it because if we stop to think about it, we will probably think that's going to cost more than I want it to pay. It's going to take more time, more energy. And so that adrenaline rush often just gets us to the point of that's the right thing to do. I'm going to do it. It doesn't even matter if I have all the resources or the time. Uh, we just get jumped into it. But I admire those people because I'm not one who seem to just know how to solve problems and meet needs without batting an eyelash. I admire those kind of people. People. You know, someone's like in need and they're on it with meal trains or they like have all of a sudden they know every counselor in town. Someone goes through a traumatic event and they're able to just connect them with counselors and meal trains and people and community. And I'm over here going, how'd you get so good at that? <laughs> how, how are you wired that way? But I know in my own life, and if, if you think about it in your own life, you've probably been that person. You know, you wouldn't say all the time, maybe that you know how to do that, but you can, in your memory banks, you go, no, yeah, I've, I've been that person. I've jumped in. I've helped people in need. And on the other side of that, I've been so grateful that I did. You know, it did cost me more time. It cost me more energy. That is not what I had planned on doing. But when I look back, I'm so grateful that I said yes, that I answered the call because God did show up and God moved. And there's a story, there's a testimony that that person has or that I have about how just God showed up and met us or me in that place of need. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. The above and beyond life. Deciding ahead of time whether I have everything it takes or not, I'm going to offer everything. I've got anyway. I'm going to take everything I have and give it to Jesus. I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to watch God multiply whatever it is that I offer him. That's what I want to talk about. Deciding ahead of time to be good soil and just out of the abundance of what God is doing in our lives, decide to give it away. There's my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures. It's not my favorite scripture. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm chapter one, where it talks about that tree that's planted by water. So I'm going to read it to you. Psalm chapter one, verses one three, three. The psalmist writes, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. It says that person, the person who does that, makes choices. They, they made a series of choices to sit in the presence of the Lord. It says that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. 
whatever they do prospers. And I don't know about you, but I want to be that person. You know, I want to be the person who's producing fruit when it's time to produce fruit. When fruit's supposed to be in season, by gosh, I want to have it and I want to be able to give it away and I want to be able to bless other people. And I want to do it for more than just one season. That's what it says, his leaf does not wither. So it's not like they had a productive year and then that tree shriveled up and died. It stays productive. It stays connected to the water source. It stays able in every season that it's supposed to produce, it's producing. And that's for the rest of my life. I want to be that kind of person. And that's a promise in scripture. If it's there for us, that's something we can lean into. We can grab onto. We can be excited about what God is doing in our lives and go, yeah, that's possible. I I want that. Um, So we're going to talk about that. There's another story in the New Testament, which deals with that idea of deciding ahead of time to be good soil and give all that we've got to the Lord and watch him show up. So there was a group, we're going to read the scripture, it's going to be in 2 Corinthians, but I want to set it up first because I grew up in church. My husband and I have completely different stories. I grew up going to church since I was like a, an infant. So where's where, where's Desmond at? Okay, uh, on always up here on stage. Like parents, I just I grew up in church. I was always there, and so I've heard scripture after scripture. I've heard the same scripture, scripture after scripture, and so I'm one of those. If I'm being uh, I'm being honest. I'm one of those people and I get real judgy and I get real critical. And so when I hear scriptures over and over again, I'm like, how many times have I heard that scripture? How many times have I heard that preached? What is something new that's going to come from that? And I know that's not everybody in the room because for some of us, this is the first time we're interacting with this content. But then there's others of us, there's still life. There's still fresh word. There's still fresh vision. And so I want to set up this scripture that we're going to read ahead of time. There was a group of believers uh, in the Middle East, now modern day Turkey, uh, but in the region of Achaia. So there, you know, all the regions, there's this region of Achaia. And what had happened is Paul is going around planting churches and he's, and he's giving them the gospel. This group of people heard about what was going on in Jerusalem. There was a time of famine and and the believers in Jerusalem were in need. Uh, And so what the Lord did because the the believers were excited about what God was doing in their life. As they're hearing the word of faith, they're going, we have, we have stuff. And so we want to give generously. We want to take everything that we have. We want to take up an offering of our supplies, our money, our resources, and we want to send it to Jerusalem. Paul, will you help us get it there? Okay. So, but they didn't, what's interesting is that they didn't take the collection or the offering right then they decided to do it. And then Paul kept traveling around planting churches churches and ministering to the churches. And now he's coming back to this region. And he's come when he comes back, he's saying, Hey, I'm coming back. Remember what you decided to do at first. Now it's time. Now it's time to pay up. He's not telling him to pay up because he didn't ask him to give in the first place. They decided out of the overflow and the abundance of their heart. I want to do that. So you, I'm, t- I'm talking to all of us when we get excited about something that God is going to do, but we have to wait a season. We get excited about what is God is going to do. And then we have to wait a season. Sometimes we need to be reminded about what we decided to do in the first place. Because after a season of waiting, <laughs> life happens. You know what I mean? Like we make some other choices in there. Okay. So what's, what's happening is when Paul, these, the people in Achaia, they heard about that need. Paul kept traveling and Paul is so excited about what God is doing in these people that he goes to the, another region in Macedonia. And he tells the Macedonians, guess what this church over here is going to do? And so now the Macedonians are like, Puh. Well, we want in too. Like, we're excited about what God is doing. We don't want to get left out of blessing the people in Jerusalem. So the people in Macedonia have decided, yeah, we're giving too. So now he has their offering. And he's, he's on his way back to this region. And so Paul is saying, hey, I want to remind you of what happened. And so I'm going to peel back the laters. I added this scripture um, later. So I, I'm going to back up and, and pull verses from chapter 8, but they're not going to go up on the screen, okay? So Paul says to them, We want you to know, he's talking to the church who made that initial decision. We want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches in the midst of a very severe trial. So they're a little bit more in need. Their overflowing joy and their extreme 
poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. But now he comes and he's talking to the people that originally made that decision. He says, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. And this is Paul's judgment about them. Here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, it's been a whole year. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. And then he says, now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. Because how many of you know that what starts out as exciting soon loses its fire? <laughs> and then we need to be reminded to keep going, to keep giving, to keep growing, to keep serving, to keep doing the good thing that we knew was good to do in the first place. And this is where we come for the scripture for today, where we're going to get into the seeds content. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six through 11. It's after all of that, that Paul says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. He's saying, you were gonna, you were gonna sow generously. Don't forget that. If you sow generously, you're gonna reap generously. I'm reminding you of what you wanted to do because that desire was God's desire and it's good. And so I want to encourage you to do it. Don't lose sight of it. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not rely reluctantly and not under compulsion for God loves a cheerful giver. That word cheerful is actually hilarious. God loves a hilarious giver. He, he loves it. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This, when it says, remember this, it really is a reminder. He is not pushing them to do something. He is not trying to bully them into giving. He is not, he is saying, that's what you wanted to do. You. And can I tell you what you wanted to do sparked a whole church in another region to get on board. And so because of that initial desire to give and to serve and to grow and to give all of you got, you've ignited a whole region and you're going to bless a whole nother region because of that good work. And so it's genuinely a reminder. And then he says this, as it is written, and he's quoting a, a different scripture, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Verse 10, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So the people in Achaia, I'm going to remind you, they were the first to respond and start with fire. And so Paul writes to them to remind them that, and I'm going to repeat myself, because how many of you know what starts out as exciting and good soon loses its fire? A year later, how many of you are still doing what you said you were going to do a year ago? <laughs> whatever it is. Some of us grow in that and we get better at it. Others of us in different areas. And it's this, it, this is all of us in different spaces in our life. Some of us get the conviction and we can run full force ahead in our life. The course of our life is changed forever. But then there's some areas that are a little bit slower to get on board. And so it takes some time. It takes some effort. It takes some reminding and some remembering because we lose sight of why we started doing it in the first place. And these are the larger questions that happen. We question if what we're still doing is necessary because we wonder, what's the fruit from this? I'm, I'm, I'm changing and I'm doing these things, but where's the return on my investment? Is it worth it? Because this looks funner. <laughs> this looks better. This looks easier. This looks simpler. And so this is what I want to do. And so then we begin, maybe we begin to get a little bit critical or we begin to get a little bit cynical or we get a little bit grumpy about if, what, should I still do this stuff? Is doing this stuff matter? But Paul says, God who gives you the seed to sow and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase that harvest of righteousness. That increase of righteousness is more 
and more right things are going to be in your life and you're going to have more and more right things to give away. So it's simply saying, just keep doing the stuff. If you keep doing the stuff, more and more right things are going to come into your life and you're going to have more and more right things uh, to give away to people. Because when we're generous, this is what the word says, when we're generous with our seed, we can also expect our resources to be multiplied. So when God gives seed, it's like... <laughs> But Pastor Ellie talked about this, I think in the beginning, there's that uh, place in Norway where they're trying to hold the seed and keep it, uh, seeds want to grow, like they just, they want to, you know, but they're, what they're doing is they're trying to preserve seed for later in life so that when there's nothing, but how many of you know seed, seed that's held doesn't reproduce, it's seed that's spilled over and planted, you keep giving seed and it keeps multiplying, so to hoard what we've been given, going, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough for later, I've got to preserve myself, I've got to preserve whatever it is in my life because I need some for later you're not going to have some for later if you preserve it you have some for later when you give it away when you plant it when you when you put it into the ground and you let it grow that's when it begins to multiply and so in this very specific passage Paul is talking about money like absolutely he's talking about financial resource but and so he's calling out to them and he's reminding of that but be sure that that a principle applies to so much more than just our finances. Absolutely, we've got to be able to trust God with that and give it. And I, I mean give it because God has created the church and the, we're a set-apart people. And so when a set-apart people trust God with absolute ridiculous, hilarious faith and giving and generosity, do you know what that does for the rest of the world? He says, if you would just trust me and give and, and you would hilariously give to me everything that you have, I will set you apart in such a way that the whole world will see and thanksgiving to God will pour out of that. And so again, there's fruit in that, but it takes faith, it takes trust, and it doesn't look like anybody, anything that anybody else is doing, but it more like deeper than finances, it goes way deeper than that. He who supplies seed to the sower will supply and increase your store of seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness in every area where you are sowing his good seed. So let's talk about forgiveness. If you have been forgiven and you're sowing seeds of forgiveness, you better believe you're going to reap a harvest of righteousness in the places where you're sowing forgiveness in the lives of other people. When you've been forgiven much and you get hurt real bad by another person and you say, you know what, this really hurts, but I know I've been forgiven and so I'm going to forgive you anyway and I'm going to love you through that and I'm going to stay in relationship with you, there's going to be an increase of harvest of righteousness that's coming your way because you're sowing seeds of forgiveness. Friendship, if if you've been in a place where you're lonely and all of a sudden you realize I have been befriended by Jesus and I have been befriended by a community of people and now you start sowing seeds of friendship in your neighborhood and in your workplace and you start making a difference and providing a place of community, you're going to reap a harvest of righteousness. More seed is going to be given to you so that there will be more and more increase in the place where you're sowing his seed. Kindness. If you realize that there have been thousands of people People, not thousands, maybe, but you have received kindness from people. You've been shown kindness in places where you should like you should have shame. You should have condemnation. But for some reason, somebody offered you kindness and it began to wash over you. And there was a healing process. And you now start sowing seeds of kindness. You're going to reap a harvest and more and more seed is going to be given to you. And more and more people are going to realize there's a there's a difference about who you are. And it's the seed that God has given you and you're giving it away. You're sowing it prayer. Maybe you went through something and somebody prayed for you in a way that you've never been prayed for before. And you go, that really made a difference. And so something sparked inside of you. And these are all those moments where you realize, I want to remember back to the beginning where you help someone in need or that adrenaline kind of gets you through. But then a year later, you have to wonder, is what I'm still doing mattering? Forgiveness. When you were forgiven, did something spark inside of you go, I need to forgive this person and this person and this person, and I need to operate in that heart of forgiveness. But a year out from that, you're wondering, is it still making a difference? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're still sowing, if you're still giving, there's still, there's going to be a reaping and there's going to be a harvest from that. Prayer. Somebody prayed for you and it changed your life. 
And so there's been a burden on your heart, like, I want to get better at praying and I want to pray for people. If you start sowing seeds of prayer and just from the best of your ability, from the place you are, you start learning and growing and leaning into that. God is going to give you more seed for that. There's going to be more opportunity to pray for different people and there's going to be a harvest. He's going to keep giving, uh, investing. Let's talk about not, not like financial investing, but building for the future. I am where I am because people have sowed so many seeds into this church, into this community, and into this life. I was one of the, the grade schoolers because I've been going to this church since I was nine years old. <laughs> nine years old, this has been my home church. And so many people poured into me in our classrooms. All of our kids' teachers right now who are over there serving, they are sowing seeds into our kids. And can I tell you that every single person who serves in that classroom is going to have more seed to give away. And when I was a teenager, people believed me at like 16, I was preaching and teaching and I was being given opportunities. Why? Because people were investing into me. They were taking everything that they had and they were giving it away to whoever they could find. They believed in young people. We're still a church who believes in young people. And so if you invest, you're going to have more seed and it's beautiful because it's multiplication. Just think about this with enough time and enough care one tiny seed, if you think about a whole forest, one tiny seed multiplies to produce a whole forest of trees. That's exponential multiplication. And so we can't always see because it's like we're living in a world of people. And here's the deal. We don't always talk about what's going on inside of our lives. We don't always share the good things. Like when you get into a life group, this is what I love about life groups. If you're not in one yet, it's not too late. Our seeds content is going to end in about two weeks. And then a bunch of new content is starting. So if you're not in a life group, it's not too late because you can get in with the new content. Uh, but what happens in life groups in those smaller groups of people, People. This happened last semester. I was leading a life group here on the campus, and there was an opportunity just to talk about the Holy Spirit and what He was doing in our lives. And it was so beautiful because one person stood up and said, You know what? I'm still here today because of what I'm seeing you do. Like when you shared your story, it resonated so much with me and it gave me hope enough to keep going. And so that's why I'm still here today. Like that's the beautiful thing. We don't always talk about what God is doing in our lives and how this person, like, how did you impact me? When we do that, then we begin to see the fruit. So can we be a church who's sharing the good things of what God is doing in us and encouraging the people who are doing the stuff? Because if people are doing the stuff and you're benefiting from it, we should be talking about that's life, that's fire, that's refreshment, that's what keeps us going, that's the fruit. Our life is producing fruit. And so if you know people, start start talking about it. So we're going to take a, like a sharp left turn right now. <laughs> a very sharp left turn. Luke 6, 6, 43 through 45. This is Jesus talking. And he says, no good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. So people don't pick fig tree, figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So in other words, Jesus is saying what's on the inside of our lives is going to come out and it's going to be multiplied. Jesus makes it simple. You can tell the character of a person the same way you can tell, tell the quality of a tree. What is coming out of their life? And so that's the question, what's coming out of my life? What people produce is a window into who they are. And last, this is encouraging though, because last week you can go back and watch all the messages online if you'd like to. Pastor Elliot talked about the, there's the parable of the wheat and the weeds growing together. And there's a type of weed that looks exactly like wheat until it's the time of the harvest. And Jesus says, let them grow up together and then they'll be reaped because you don't want to pull up wheat and you don't want to pull up, you don't want to pull up the wrong thing. The beautiful thing about the kingdom is God can take what is weed and turn it into wheat. 
God can take a bad tree and he can make it good. God can take a bad branch and he can graft it into a life-giving one and it will become a fruitful tree. He can take something from the good tree and he can put it over here and it will begin to plant. Uh, And so what I want to talk about is the application kind of part of the message. How do we grow in living a generous life? How do we grow in living a generous life? So if you're going to write notes, you can begin to fill in blanks. Number one is just start. (laughs) Just start. We have to start somewhere. We don't just wake up generous one day. If we've never been a gen- like generous a day in our life, then we're probably, I'm, I'm going to say we're a bad tree in that area. Like we don't have that fruit, the ability to produce it until we start, until we get grafted in to something that's doing it. So just take one step towards living a generous life. And for you, you already know what it is. You already know the thing that God's been like, inc- like you had an idea about maybe I should do this. Maybe I should give up this. Maybe I should do this. The Lord's already, yeah. and that's it. You just start. So maybe that's tithing. Maybe it's giving. Maybe Maybe it's serving. Maybe it's just attending church regularly. Whatever it is, just start. Maybe it's being kind at work. Like I realize the Lord's been working on me and I just need to be kind to people or I just need to start noticing or seeing. It's very simple. Whatever it is, just start. I was thinking of this (laughs) because um, I live in a very healthy family. Um, Many of you know, because Elliot talks about it all the time, he's keto, right? So he's, he's, he, he loves to be keto. And I, so that's what he does. And then I think that I'm healthy because my husband is keto. And <laughs> by association, osmosis. Um, and then here's the thing. I also buy so many fruits and vegetables. Like most of our food budget is on fruits and vegetables. And I think we're so healthy. You know who eats most of the fruits and the vegetables? My kids. <laughs> and so let's just, let's just break this, break this down for a minute. And I'm going to get into the nitty gritty, but so my husband is making, you know, his, his life choices and I'm making my shopping choices, but my kids are the one benefiting that. And so here's the question, like to make this relatable, am I cultivating or am I benefiting in our own life, in your own life? Are you cultivating things or are you benefiting from the cultivation of others? And so because God is good and he is generous and we, we live in a community of believers and we're surrounded by believers, if that's how we live our life, we're in life groups, we're part of the church community, we're serving, we're on the dream team, there's a, there's a significant amount of our life that is being blessed and provided for. But if, let's just say those plants or those people were to be uprooted and moved to another location or something were to happen and so they got picked up and removed from your life, whether it was good or bad, the question is, would you still be like, would your life still look the same that it is? Would you still have the same amount of hope? Would you still have the same amount of faith? Would you still have the same amount of joy? Are you cultivating or are you benefiting? And there's both. We live in a community where we should benefit, but we should also cultivate so that others can be benefited by the things that we're doing in our own life. So would your life still be a life of abundance is the question. Is that abundance coming from within you, a wellspring that's that's coming over because of what God is doing in your life and how you're working to stay planted or or are we benefiting? So that's like just start. If you realize, man, I've loved this, but I'm just benefiting in this area, that's an invitation to start. In the same way that I've been blessed by that, I want to cultivate that in my own life. We just start. Number two, join a team. (laughs) Growth Jack's happening today, people. Uh, join a team. But, and I'm not saying because we just need you to serve somewhere. That's not it at all. Join a team so that God can multiply the impact of what he's put inside of you. However God wired you, he's going to use it. And there is something about you that God is going to multiply in your life. This isn't a push, although we would love to have like everybody ever serve in our classrooms <laughs> because we're a church of young families. Uh, and we have big, can I tell you that we have big plans for the future? We're drawing up plans to make our classrooms better to kind of redesign those. And, and that's coming. That's a, that's a future thing. Right now we're drawing plans for that. But I am where I am because people poured 
into me as a young person. And so we make a difference when we pour into our kids. And so I say, join a team. And I'm not telling you to serve in the classroom because if you had kids, I don't want you anywhere near my kids. <laughs> but there's a place for you. There is a place for you. There's things God has put inside of you. And maybe they're not being tapped into yet. Maybe you haven't had an opportunity to serve or to discover your gifts, discover a little bit more how God wired you. This is a great place to do it. You can join a team and we'll invest in you. We build leaders around here. We invest in people so that you can invest in and build up other people. So one way you can do that is join a team. Number three, spill the love of God all over the place. I was going to say spread or scatter, but I want you spilling the love of God all over the place. If you've got a bucket of seed, I don't want you like picking out one seed at a time going, I'll just save the rest for later. I want you to take your whole bucket of seed and just dump it out. Why? Because God's going to fill it back up. That's what he says. He who provides seed to the sower will increase your store. He will keep on. So whatever you've got, would you just spill it all over the place? <laughs> Make a mess with God's love, like everywhere. You know, have you ever, you know, spilled anything? The other day I cracked open. Oh, when you crack open an egg on the floor. That is the boogeriest mess that you ever have to clean up. You need like 12,000 paper, a whole roll of paper towels is what you need to spill it. Make a mess with God's love all over. The, get it all over people. Why? Because he's going to increase. He's going to pour out more. And they may hate it at first. Like, would you just get your God stuff off of me? But if you do it with love and you do it with kindness and you're extending forgiveness and you're showing grace, that mess, they'll want it their own selves. They're going to want their own bucket of Jesus to spill all over the place. Okay, and then number four, watch Jesus move with our more. Your more is just what that little boy's lunch was. Some loaves and some fishes. Your more, that, 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 the, there's a story where in John where the, you know, Jesus is preaching and there's multitudes, 5,000 plus people are on the mountainside. The more that Jesus moved with was that little boy's lunch. It was all he had going, this is all the need that I see. These are all the things that can happen. I want to help in all these areas. I want to serve in all these areas. I want to grow in all these areas. I want to get better in all these areas. But all I've got is this. Take whatever it is that you've got and give it to Jesus and watch him multiply it. He's going to multi multiply it and feed the multitudes. Because God, and so this is, this is the heart we have. God, use whatever I have. I want to give everything to you, everything in my life, and I want to say yes. I want to I give you my more, and I want to see it be multiplied to the multitudes that they may be blessed and begin to see you. So whether we're talking about generosity or our ability to forgive others, our willingness to obey God, our understanding of his word, or our willingness to respond in faith, this is kind of a takeaway. What comes out of our heart will be multiplied in our lives. And so if what is coming out of my heart is, God, I just want to grow and I want to give it to you. And all the things that we've been talking about in this series, everything that you've been doing in my life, all the relationships that, I, that I'm seeing, where I'm seeing you, I want more of that. If that's the desire of our heart, it will come out and be multiplied. And I was thinking about this like orchards. Because there's the mustard seed, which just the, the faith, the size of, I've been working in our kids' classrooms on Wednesday nights. And so we've been doing a lot of things with mustard seeds and they're so tiny. And that's what Jesus says, faith, faith the size of the mustard seed, which is all over your corned beef right now. It's the mustard seed that's flavoring it. That, you know what I'm talking about? The mustard seed grows into a tree and what that does is when you have faith as small as a mustard seed and you just begin to cultivate it, you begin to trust God in another area and another area. It doesn't say a mustard seed. It grows into a huge mustard tree. What happens with the mustard tree? You can find shade in the mustard tree. Other people can benefit from what you have, that life of faith that you have cultivated its branches come over and now people can come under and they can find rest 
in the faith that you have created. And then they begin to move to a place where now they're cultivating in their own life. But it started with you. It started with you. There's the fig tree, which is talking about fruit. But Jesus curses the fig tree because it doesn't have any fruit on it. It's not even time. And he just curse you. Crazy. It's fruit. And so as, as people, we are in our own life. We, we have our own orchard. We have trees of faith. We have mustard trees, we have fig trees, we have trees that are planted by streams of water. And then when we're in a community of people, they've got orchards. So we're, it's not just one tree. God has given us orchards, orchards of provision and abundance and blessing and faith and encouragement and hope. And he doesn't want any part of it missing. He wants overflow and abundance. He, wanna take, he wants to take all of those good things in our life and he wants to multiply it. He wants to multiply it. And so I want you to think about the places in your life where God wants you to have an orchard so that there's, 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 there's above and beyond blessing and provision and multiplication that's happening in your life and the people around you. I'm just going to repeat that one scripture in Psalm. As you learn to delight in the law of the Lord and as you meditate on his law, seeking to integrate his ways into your life, you will be like, we will be like, that tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do will prosper. Let's go ahead and pray. Close your eyes and bow your heads if you would. Father God, we thank you so much that you're the God of abundance. Lord, and you multiply you're, you're not a God of addition. You are a God of multiplication. You have power. You have blessing. You have provision for every part of our life. Lord, in the places where there's brokenness and sadness and we've been hurt, your desire is not that that place would stay withered and shriveled up. Your desire is that it would be healed, restored, and that it would begin to be a branch that grows out and other people will benefit from the place of healing that has happened. And so I speak your forgiveness and your healing over our hearts, Jesus, in the places where we need to let go and give that over to you and work on cultivating that life of forgiveness. Jesus, would you do it in our hearts? We say we want that. We want your abundance. We want your blessing. We want your healing. We want your wholeness. In the places of friendship and community where we felt alone and isolated, that's not your will. That's not your plan for us. And so I speak your blessing and your provision and your friendship. Lord, the word that says you have called us not slaves, not servants, but you have called us your friend. Father, would that penetrate the hearts of the people who need to know that you have called them friend, you have called them brother, you have called them sister. You are family, you are friend, you are God of abundance. We thank you, Jesus. For anyone here today who would say, I don't know the Lord that way. And I'm not connected to him in the place where I'm going to receive his provision and his blessing and abundance. But you say, I, I want that. I want what God has in my life. And maybe you're, you're kind of two groups of people. Maybe you're the group of people who says, yeah, last year or at some point in my life, I was really excited about the things of God and what God would do in my life. And I wanted it. But actually, it's been some time and I've walked away from that and I forgot its purpose. I forgot who he is and what he means in my life. And you would say, I, I want to come home. I want to connect back to the source of life. And I want to begin again, if that's you. Maybe for the first time you're saying, I've never made that decision, but I want to make it today. Would you just shoot your hand up into the air? Because I'd love to pray with you and celebrate what God wants to do in your life. Give me just a couple more minutes, if that's you, saying yes, amen to the Lord. I see your hand, amen. God is already on the move. I see your hand. Amen. Church, go ahead and let's just repeat this after me. Father God, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you that you come running to us in the place of shame. You desire to give a double portion. I thank you for your healing. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who died in my place so that I could have your life. 
I receive that sacrifice. Holy Spirit, would you come into my life? Would you remind me of the good things that Jesus has spoken? And would you lead me to do what's right? In Jesus' name, amen.